Hey, it's Kenyas from J2 Esports, and you are listening to Stenowin. Okay, so let's start. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Center Ring, aka TCR, aka your favorite esports podcast. It's episode 213, coming to you live and or pre recorded from an undisclosed location. The date is February 16th, 2020, the time 8.47 p.m. Central Time. And dare I say, this is going to be the best episode ever. As the six invitational wrapped up right before we started recording, so the hype, the hype rocket is real at Space Station Gaming. Uh, was crowned victorious. So we'll talk about that to start the show. We have Blast Premiere finished up, so we'll talk about that a little bit and where to look forward to with the next stages. Yikes of the week, of course. We have that for Monday. And Nifty from Team Envy's CSGO roster joined us earlier in the week so we will play that interview for you uh, as well and of course a jam-packed e-news that's what you call a professional intro for those on just listening on the podcast you would not know that that took three times to get right but if you join us live on twitch every sunday and wednesday night you could see all the pre-production work as we just Somewhat don't know how to hit record or get distracted in the intros. It's great. So you can do that. Of course, you'll know when we go live by also following us on Twitter, at The Center Ring. And our website, tcr.gg, has all the links you will ever need to stay in contact with us and all the socials there, including our Discord link. So you should join that and be a part of the conversation. If you're listening on iTunes, leave us a review. Uh, and your thoughts, we definitely will read those. And I think that's just about it. Hello, my name is Tim. I'll be your captain for this journey into esports, but alongside me, as always, is my best friend. He's my brown friend. It's Anuj. What's up? Dude, it's like the first time we're doing a show where the news happens before we come on the show. It's a nice change. It's a nice change, I'm not going to lie. And it went to a game five of a, of a best of five. I was really not expecting to be able to talk about six invitational, but uh, no. it's a nice it's nice to get talk about breaking news, I guess. Uh, even though we're a podcast, so it's not really ever going to be breaking, but hey, that's not the that's not the point. That's not the point at all. Uh, real quick show news though before we get into the six invitational. So, of course, everyone knows about Juke.gg. We've had them on the show before to pimp out their new website. Talked about it last week, how they just got a fat stack of cash uh, in their first run of investments. Well, they don't just do esports events now. They also do esports talk shows and podcasts. There is a section for talk shows. And wouldn't you know, Anuj, we are on that section. We are, man. I'm excited. You know, we've been... Tim's right. We've been we've been talking about Juke for a long time, well before these guys were on the show, um, well before I feel like it was even out in like beta. We knew we knew about like the concept as it was coming out, and we're big fans. So to be a part of it is is pretty neat. I'm pretty stoked that they have a talk show section on there to promote podcasts, and um, you'll see a lot of great ones on there. And, and like I said, I'm just feel like I'm I'm honored to be part of it. So uh, pretty exciting news for us. Yeah, so if you're already on juked.gg and you have an account, you can look up the centering. Um, I think you can also go to the talk show section section and uh, go to like the schedule. And if you just look Sunday and Wednesday nights, you'll see us right there. The centering, 8.30 p.m. Or I guess whatever your respective time is for that. But you will definitely see us on there. You can click the remind me thing, get notifications, and you can watch us on juked. Uh, if for whatever reason you're just not feeling Twitch or anything else at that moment. So and I would say, you know, support Juke. They're uh, a great service that you don't have to pay for. What was also a great service that we didn't have to pay for, though, Anuj, was the Six Invitational. And boy, did it live up to the hype. You, you know, the, 
the whole time I was sitting there thinking of ninjas, like what a stretch they had to go through to make it to this point and to fall short when they were so close to the finish line, like incredibly defeating, but, but definitely a big congratulations to, to space station, um, you know, for that organization to pull through against the cast that they were going up against. Um, obviously, they're not in a lot of the other big leagues that, that we're accustomed to seeing right now. And so for them to, to do it in a game that they're obviously heavily focused in um, shows a lot. And so, I mean, just a, a big congratulations because that was a fantastic game. That, that gave us exactly what you wanted in the grand final. Yeah, and, and the whole time I was thinking of our listener, Kai, who is at least before this, was the only actual space station gaming fan that I knew about. Like, we met him at BlizzCon, and we were like, oh, so what? what's your team? And he was like, space station gaming. And me and Anuj both just kind of looked at each other and were like, oh. What's your other team? Like, what's your real team? <laughs> and he was like, no, man, they're from Utah. Apparently they're from Utah. So, and, and I think that's kind of the, the neat thing about this is that they aren't your premier org, right? You, Nip, uh, TSM, who else was in there? Navi, Fnatic, MIBR. Fnatic. I mean, there there are some big named orgs in this tournament. Faith Clan, right? And for Space Station to come out on top, kind of that Cinderella story as far as just the org goes and that feel good moment. Uh, and you know, I don't I don't want to take the credit of Nuge here, but. Uh, unconfirmed that they were inspired to victory by sitting down the aisle from us. DreamHack 2017, was it? I think we were making fun of them, Tim, at the time. Because they had the coach there in the LAN area, and it looked funny. That was the chip on the shoulder that they needed. It was. I felt like... (laughs) Pushed them over the top. Us... May, uh, th- first off, them witnessing us get to the final four in the Counter Strike tournament that was later told to us that it was a fake tournament and not the dr- real DreamHack tournament, but still top four nonetheless. I feel like that top four performance and us laughing at them for being a BYOC team with a coach was the chip on the shoulder that Space Station Gaming needed to win. The Invitational in 2020. Three years later, and they finally were able to do it. And look, that's another um, Maybe it chip two. for Maybe NA across all the titles, you know? Like, they've started to... Really, it's just, I think, like League of Legends at this point that we haven't won a NA championship in. Um, but we've got them in, you know, all, all the big sports, and so this is nice to... I think this is the first one for... They, so they said this on the broadcast... Um, after after Space Station won, saying that this was the first Tier 1 land victory for NA since the 2017 Invitational. I now, I, know, I can't fact check that. There's I literally do not have resources to confirm if that's a true or not or if I misheard. Were they PC then even? Um, I'm, Bosco, I, think... I believe, what, Bosco is the first player in in the game that's won on both console and PC now. He's well, won a so championship think, in um, both. Let's see. It says one. That might have been Xbox One. Back then. Let's see. Yeah, that was on Xbox so, One, it looks like. So it doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> if you went on a console, I mean, come on now. Uh, well, it could have also been PC. So that was back when they actually did both. So they did like a PC tournament and a remember like so when Rainbow first came out, Ubisoft tried the crazy idea of having a pro scene yeah. and console and PC, which eventually just died off in 2018 when they were like, "Yeah, no, this isn't gonna work out at all." So it's crazy though if that is true that it's really been that long since NA not only just won an invitational but just to win a major LAN event. So like a tier one event. Yeah, it, that was pretty nuts and. This took it, they took it to a game five. They they went in with a game advantage because obviously that's kind of rather than resetting the bracket in these type of tournaments, that's how they do it. Is they'll give one person the game. What advantage. do you prefer, or which do you prefer? I should say. 
Uh, if you're going to do a best of five, if you're doing a best of five, I prefer the game advantage because I am yeah. not sitting through a reset bracket and a best of five. Like you're looking at what a best of two best of fives. No, thank you. No, I, I agree. This, this is the way to go. And you're right. Nip, Nip came out swinging on Villa and border, both maps. They were very dominant. Um, they, I mean, they, they really had no trouble on offense or defense on, on actually both of those maps. They were pretty comfortably taking the games. And really, even in Clubhouse, it started off really rough for, for Space Station. They were down, what, 3-0, I think? I think it was 3-0 in yeah. Clubhouse uh, before they pulled their way back for a 7-5 victory. There was one round where I think it was like 5-4, if I'm not mistaken. It was match, match game point for, for NIP. And he was literally, there was what, it must have been a three on one against Space Station. And the guy clutched that round there when the dude was planning. He killed him with like, what, half a second left. So is that the one where he killed him with a C4? And then Nip was, so Nip won that round though. That was not match point just yet though, because the one I'm thinking of. It was five four for this one on Clubhouse. All right. So the one I'm thinking of, the, the nutty play that I'm thinking of is Nip was planning the bomb, Space Station threw a C4 on the below him. Right, because they were the floor below, killed them. Nip had to run, then pick up the bomb, get to the other bomb site just so they wouldn't get shot. Right, plant the bomb. Now Nip ended up winning that round, but I'm not gonna lie, dude. I don't think I've ever seen a rainbow tournament this hyped before. It it was the crowd was insane. First of all, like props to the props to the crowd because they were. Oh god, yeah, dude. They they were on space station space hard, obviously station being an A hype, crowd. They were on the, I, I, I tweeted this out. It's not a hype train. It's a hype rocket. And they are taking yeah. this thing to Mars. That entire, apart from like the two rows of depressed Brazilian fans, God bless you because you were quiet. Then you started going your Brazilian ways and getting loud and talking a whole lot of mess. And then you were just shot right back down. <laughs> and you, uh, you, I feel for you. You can see the shock in, in Nip's face as that, as the last, uh, the final map was happening. Bank, as that map was happening, they kept on panning over to Nip's players' faces, and it it really looked like confusion, almost disorientation to a certain extent. Like you could see the pressure at that point had mounted up so high, and and they could they felt the momentum shift. Really, not a whole lot they could do there. Well, and Anuj, it's because it wasn't. Th- there wasn't just like, oh well, hey guys, look. Um... You know, Space Station, they had a game advantage. You guys are in the lower bracket. Hey, you, you played good. No. They rolled Space Station those first two maps. Oh, yeah. Rolled them. Like, to the point where Space... I, I mean, so, fun fact, I actually put money down on Space Station in the semis. Thank you very much. Got on top of that one and won it. For whatever reason, my betting, my betting website... Uh, didn't have the finals. Like I couldn't put money down on the finals. Sucks because I was I'm I was on the hype. You were riding them. I was riding Space Station, so I was gonna put a lot of money down on them. But then, like when I started watching, I'm like, oh, thank God I couldn't. <laughs> now, okay, yes, <laughs> you now I wish. It. Now I'm pissed. But oh man, I I. What's funny is I probably would have turned it off. I probably because like when there's money involved, I get a lot more emotional, and I probably would have been like. Done. I'm. I am. Done. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. done. Got to step away. I'll, I'll watch the vods later. I cannot watch this right now. But uh, but that was not the case because for whatever reason my my site wasn't didn't even have that as an option to put money down. Um, but no, I thought it was a an an incredible event. We say it every time that Rainbow puts on a big event that it's just unreal how this dark horse of an esport can still. I mean, it was number one on Twitch. I think overall the game hit like 220 something thousand. I saw the stream was like around like 120, 130,000 by the end of it. So it's just nuts how this little community, this little slice of esports can still overtake the scene, whether it be for one or two nights a year. Yeah. Yeah. No, completely agree. The, the event was great. Can we talk about the glitter in the right. beards? Did you see that? Uh, yeah. So I had some um, of the games on mute. And then I like turned back to it, and glitter was on beards. 
Yeah, I didn't. I didn't understand that. It looked pretty cool on camera. I'll give that. I'll give them that. Like understand. it was an interesting look. But overall, again, I mean, the the event w- was fantastic. I thought the stage was great. The the fans were were awesome and definitely into it. Um, and we had good matches. That's the most important part. Is you know a lot of these matches came down to the wire or were very close games, and and so gave you a reason as a casual viewer to, to step in and stay watching, right? If you were watching that finals, I guarantee you didn't switch it off. Um, I mean, you, you must have been hooked the whole time. So, again, congrats to Rainbow. And, and man, just I'm, I'm excited to see how they, how they have, they're still on an upward trajectory, right? It's not like they're starting to slant down. No. Like the money is going up in these tournaments. The events are growing. Um, the crowd is getting bigger. So I'm, I'm excited to see what continues to happen here. I know they announced. Um some of the things for year five, because at, at these, they always do like their panels before the finals to kind of talk about, okay, this is what we can expect for this year. I know Tachanka is going to come out with another rework or they're getting a reworked on him. Um, so that's also kind of cool to see an original, not hero, but uh operator yeah. um, being, being still worked on and things like that. So yeah, there's big things planned for rainbow six siege um, in the coming year. So, I can't wait to play it that one time that I go back to play it a year. <laughs> Get dominated, call it a day, move it, back it to never, it. It's like play. once or twice a year. I'm like, you know what? I need to play some Rainbow. And then after like <laughs> one night. This weekend. That itch was already here this weekend watching the damn games. I, I was know. like, should, should I? Uh, no. And then no, after one don't. night, I'm like, you know what? I'll watch the pros. I'll watch yeah. the pros. They make the games look <laughs> a lot more exciting than I do when I'm sitting in a corner just waiting for someone to walk by. Uh, but no, so congratulations to Space Station Gaming. Awesome for an org that, and I'm, I'm sure I'm underselling this, right? This is just my lack of knowledge of Space Station Gaming. But from an org that when I first saw them was DreamHack Austin. It, it was like 2018 or 17. I, I forget which one it was, but it had to have been 18. Um, 2018, being in a BYOC tournament to then qualify to play in that little pro ladder there to now winning the invitational in 2020 shows you kids dreams do come true. You just got to stick with it one step at a time as nifty will tell you in our interview later on in the show. Um, Let's get over to the counter-strike buzz though, because blast premier group C ended up finishing this week or this weekend rather. So not only do we have that results, but Anuj, we also have the table is set for the spring 2020 finals and the spring 2020 showdown. It is, and we had a you know we had a good weekend really leading into this. I think the teams that advanced caught most people off guard in the sense of of the one two here. But yeah, we we do have um, our showdown set. You know, we have half the team set now for the, the final stage and. I'm honestly incredibly excited for what's ahead for this tournament because now we we have a field that is completely out of whack. Um, you have the top teams in the world playing in the showdown to advance. You have some sleeper teams that have made it through like your complexities um, in getting a chance to, to play in the final. So I think we have like really good CS ahead of us. We're going to have great matches now in the showdown which could have been like 50 50 if they were going to be good before um because you might have had two well, lower so tier one teams I'm going up against each other because there are a lot of good teams that weren't invited uh to to the premier league the premier league uh, watch out copyright blast premier uh that weren't right we talked about last week fanatic mouse um, you know, some of those bigger name guys that we see in the top 10. So they are, I, I would have to assume, will be invited to compete with this this showdown, right? Is that kind of safe to assume we're going to see them there? You would think so, yeah. You'd there's think. like, what, four, four spots remaining? Uh, Let me pull this up here. I believe so. So we, uh... Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, there's invited slash TBA qualifier. So who knows what the hell that means? Looking at Liquipedia, that's what it says. But we're just going to assume invited teams. Well, if Fnatic or Mouse got invited to what we originally thought were going to be the teams in the showdown, 
I would have said they were going to run the table, right? But now you got Vitality, you got Astralis, you got Evil Geniuses down in there. It got a lot more interesting to see how these are going to compete. We might see it yet again where some of these top teams don't make it to the next Blast premiere season. Oh, for sure. There's, there's going to be a couple that don't make it out of this stage, for sure. I mean, there has to be. You're going to have top teams eventually eliminated just based on who's there, right? You're either going to have, like, you have Vitality, Astralis, Evil Geniuses, right? Three teams that everyone can comfortably say top 10 teams. Then 100 Thieves right around the corner. Now, if you start adding Mouse Sports and Fnatic, well, you can't have all of them advance. You know, they're not all going through to the next stage, so a couple are definitely going to fall out. And so, um, yeah, like, th this really just turned the tournament upside down. But again, I think from the viewer perspective, awesome like this is exactly what we could have hoped for because you do have now going into the finals you're going to have some cinderella stories to follow too right it's not going to be a bunch of juggernauts you have uh for those of you that are huge phase fans when was the last time you saw phase in a big event playing in meaningful games it's it's been a long time you're gonna have that here uh complexity and, fans and some saying a favorite but yeah and potentially a favorite right like who knows is that going to carry over? Was that a one-time thing? Because, like, really, that's the anomaly that they played so well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if they continue that through. C complexity. I mean, Tim, they gave us, like, probably the best start to a Counter-Strike season that we could have asked for in, in terms of storylines and um, what they were able to accomplish with a hodgepodge lineup in the sense of veterans and rookies, basically. So, Well, and the best thing about... The complexity defeating Astralis and making it through to the finals is not what happened in Blast. It's what happened to complexity outside of Blast. For and Rio, yeah. That's getting eliminated from major contention by losing in a best of three to Smash. And that was their third chance to make it through to the close qualifier, if I'm not mistaken. So now, granted, I think this might have been the first or the potentially the second one with this current lineup but you have several chances in the open qualifier to make it to the close qualifier they had kept advancing to that final stage of the open qualifier in losing when it mattered in those best of threes so they had done that twice already this was their third opportunity to push through and it did not happen again for them so this tournament right now is their major right um, oh, yeah. th this is going to be the, the biggest thing on the plate for them. Now, they're, they're going to get invited. Uh, whoa, um, whoa, 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 whoa. Sir, DreamHack Dallas is the same weekend as a major. So let's not be labeling what would be a major for some of these teams. We don't yeah, know what right. DreamHack Dallas is going to be. That is actually kind of cool for us because they will 100% be there. <laughs> oh, my God, now, yeah. That weekend. They're, down, so, they're down the tollway. They're, they're definitely going to be there. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll be good for us. Oh, didn't even think if, about that. Can I go on a side tangent? It would be badass if Envy, Complexity, throw in another, like, local Texas. I mean, you that, DFW is buzzing with eSports. You could probably get a solid squad over there to of, of teams to play. I digress, though. Tournament's looking a little bit better for sure. We'll get, we'll get into DreamHack, though, <laughs> at, a, at a later date. But, yeah, now you got – we're basically going to have what looks like the Legend stage, you know, pretty much going into um, the showdown coming up. So – I am quite excited for that. I think this weekend, um, in, in terms of the games that we had happen this weekend, I thought a couple surprises for me, Tim. Um, OG. OG was able to beat Evil Geniuses in two best of threes. They looked really good at times in those matches. Like I, I really thought um, you know, Valde held his own, obviously. Alexi B was able to to mid-round call really well on Inferno to take a map that I, I didn't think they had any chance winning. But to beat them twice um, in two BO3s, that, that's got to be a huge confidence boost for them. They ended up falling short to, to G2, who was on their own monster run of themselves. Again, we, we told you last episode, you know, Nexa, Hunter, like the, these guys are no slouches that they picked up. Like they picked up some very good players. And it's it's not surprising to me that after a little bit of time off, they they look as good as they did. Um, again, I, I would love to see this kind of, they didn't play evil geniuses. So 
take that for what it's worth. They they beat OG twice, I believe. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah they beat the OG twice, and then the and and they yeah. beat One Hundred Thieves, which I said last week. And since since One Hundred Thieves signed Renegades roster, I'm not a believer of the hype. You know, I I thought. Even when they were renegades, it was always a feel-good story. It was always, uh, you know, everyone rooted for them. They never rooted against them. I never once thought they were buyout worthy. So, no knock on 100 Thieves and what you guys do there. Um, you know, I, I love what that entire org is doing and how they handle their business. But I don't believe the hype when it comes to, to that. Uh, first off, though, with G2, Kenny S., where have you been, buddy? Because he looked like old Kenny S. That op on Dust2, dude, some of those flicks were... Uh, even when they slowed it down in the replay, I still couldn't really tell what the hell he did. I don't know how he's, they see, like, these freaking pixels, dude. Like, they see Adderall. absolutely That's how they see nothing. It. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, I, I really have no freaking clue. Yeah, he did look really good. He was plus one for the finals, which was which was great because, I mean, o- overall it was a very balanced effort. Nobody was really dominant. It was yeah. a very, very good team effort on their part. Jax was at the bottom, and he was minus nine. He was 40 and 49 throughout the three maps. And so I'll tell you this, not, too. Not the loud. crazy thing with Dust2, which was the one map OG ended up taking, um, by the way, not a good name game. G2 and OG, not a good name game. Yeah. I felt- they took each other's maps, which was pretty crazy. Um, when G2 took Inferno, I thought for sure this was a 2-0. Um, well, so, so even for with OG Dust2, to- I was watching that game, and, and wasn't it kind of weird? Like, even when they were up by, like, five rounds, six rounds, for me personally, never felt like G2 was out of it. I was like, okay, this was, it was it's nice by OG, I think part of the issue that G2 had on Dust2 is that they tried forcing it on A site way too much. It was almost like their only strategy was, guys, let's not ever look at B. Let's go to A. Let's go up Cat. Like, the utility damage, I would love to see the stat for OG's utility damage just done on Catwalk. Like, just right there while entering the site because it's, it was like round after round G2 would just get blasted trying to walk up there. But obviously, I mean, you know, they're victorious. You know, so it, it does too is such a French map. Like it's such a, it's such an embodiment of French CS. Obviously everybody plays does too, but the French are like known for playing does too and playing it aggressive. And unfortunately G2 did not change that approach at all going into dust two i think they felt very confident coming out of inferno they had their plan that they were going to do on dust two which has been the plan forever and they didn't change it and it killed them because uh, i mean og is a very talented lineup like it's not like you know they're not a slouch they're not going to be a pushover even if they are losing and so um yeah i think they were very well prepared for what they were going to do on dust two and in, in, in a bit him in the ass. I mean, I think overall, I think even Nuke really. Did they ban train? I'm trying to remember if they banned train or not. They did. OG did ban train. So that's why it wasn't the the, the final map. Um, Nuke was also a toss up map, though. I, I think they had played earlier on that map and. OG was able to take outside control fairly easily. G2, however, was pretty dominant in the inner game they rushed they played aggressive so uh that was a 50 50 map that that g2 was still able to pull off so again congrats to them you know get a little extra cash in the pocket um i think og will feel pretty good coming out of this to get top two and then having knocked out evil geniuses you know twice and that's the team that should feel concerned if anything right like they're the ones that um did not look good to start the year. That's a rough start for them, and and now it's only going to get harder. They're they're going to be playing against some of the top ranked teams, and which they are themselves. But it's not not going to be an easy run. That the NA team that would have came out here struggling the most would have been Evil Geniuses. Yeah, like that yeah, was the least. In fact, that was the team that I thought was going to kind of overtake Liquid as top NA and. Now, NACS is not in a bad spot. It's just all over the place, right? Like, to to be considered number one in NACS, 
it's up for the takings. I don't think any team right now can definitely say we are the best NA team. Yeah, like I think if you're still like picking one, everyone's still picking Liquid right now, just because uh, you know, although they're they're all inconsistent at the moment. Right. So if I'm going to pick out of the inconsistent ones, I'm going to pick the one with the best players on it. But you're you're right. Like it is a toss up. Any any one of these teams from Liquid, Evil Geniuses, um, Complexity, hell, at the moment, you know, even Envy with their new lineup has a chance to do some damage within NA. I don't know where they'll rank you know, throughout the world rankings, but they don't have a slouch of a lineup either. So um, NACS is is pretty open at the moment. Yeah, which makes these smaller tournaments, not blast, but like dream hacks and, and things like that. These smaller tournaments where these guys are going to get invited to is that much more important because that's where you're going to see the NA side kind of develop a little more. Um Hell, you could even throw Cloud9 in that pool right now where it's just you don't know what's going to happen and they cannot take any tournament for granted because it's it's wide open for, for NA's number one. Real quick, question on OG's roster. Mm-hmm. Valde? Yeah. Okay. Just, want, just wanted to make sure that's how you say it. Oh, that's where we're going with that. Okay, yes, yes, that is how you say it, Valde. They were all over the place calling that game. Launders and poor man Sadakis. Scotty? All over I like the place. I, like, <laughs> I, I felt like it was one of those things where they didn't know how to say it, so they just said, hey, let's say it different every single every time. time. Yeah, it's Valde, right? I mean, I'm pretty, that's what... That's what I've heard the most, so that's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna yeah, use. Yeah, they, they were saying. I I swear they were saying Vald. Uh, like I Vald. Think I always said Valde, like an ah Valde. Yeah. That's what we're going with, and the center ring's never wrong. So definitely not, never wrong. A hundred percent on on everything right now. So looking ahead, then you have the spring finals, which will be June 19th through the 21st. So someone might be watching that in the hospital. Anuch. Yeah. Yeah. Or right before we go, I, I might have some time off around that time. So I'll do full coverage of that event. Yeah. Um, it's in do Moscow. So I expect Cast- you to watch everything there. Casting couch while the wife's popping one out. And so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, that's good. That's also going to take place after both the other seasons. And so we will now in between this event and in the spring 2020 blast premiere event, we will have the B side season take place and we'll have ESL. So we have a, a lot of CS to see how these teams kind of shape out and see, you know, I kind of want to write this down. What are the rankings today? And what are the rankings going to be in June? And is, you know, it's, how comparable are they? It'd be kind of an interesting take to see where we're at in spring. With, are you saying be, just because of the latest, um, like all the different leagues and everything? Like how do yeah, there's, affect there's a the lot of CS between now and um, the showdown, right? Like it's not. Yeah. Well, you have the final. So it was 19th and 20th of June or 21st. And the showdown is at the beginning of June. Yeah. So there's a lot of CS between now and June. And so I'm really curious to see where, these teams are kind of, you know, at that point. Because don't we have B site and ESL before then? I believe so. Yeah, I believe they're Both starting be wrapped up relatively then, so. soon. So exciting times, man, for CS uh, all over the place here, and uh, it's kind of weird. Like with all these different leagues popping up, I guess you're right. Like we will kind of see more in between movement. It's not just going to be waiting for ESL New York or wherever, right? we're going to have leagues to give us rather than just big tournaments. So we'll keep up to date with that as always. Uh, Let's get into some yikes of the week though, because with another Monday comes another big week of yikes. I'll do my first one here. If you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. The Washington post. That's right. Washington post pretty big paper from what I understand. Did an article titled nobody talks about it because everyone is in on it. Adderall presents esports with an enigma. So, my yikes of the week. I'm gonna I'm gonna su- switch it up on you. You think, oh man, Tim's gonna say kids taking Adderall. That's a big yikes. No, the yikes of the week is that people are still acting like they don't know that people in esports take Adderall. 
Like, it's been going on, like, forever. It's been a story. <laughs> Everyone takes Adderall. What are we talking about? Like, businessmen. How about just Adderall, right? I understand that it's it's uh something to say with esports, but bros, come on. Like, why are, like, is this, like... How people in my office are on Adderall. Yeah. Like, I mean, no, no joke. And prescribed, not illegally. It's not like they're taking it from friends. Prescribed it, you know? And so, you know, depending on if you want to say it's rampant use and acting like it's getting worse now than it was then, th- this is, like, new to you. I don't think it's new to anybody in the scene. Well, you know, Am like I also a bad person for being like, meh, meh, you know, you know, look, if you're prescribed it and you take it and it helps you in these situations and you're not crushing it up and snorting it, I don't have a problem with it. Right. Um, if you're sitting there doing rails before you get on to the freaking stage well that yeah that's a much bigger issue right but to to act like this is some shocking news and you know this is new like i bet what? you a lot of these people, people have prescriptions for it people who play 80 hours a week take adderall to stay awake and play what how how are we ever supposed to know and then you have other guys like slasher and everything going like i've been told that people in the overwatch league take adderall like, uh, yeah. Have you ever seen them talk? I could probably tell you which ones do. <laughs> like, like, hell, even at that homestead, I looked at you when one of them were talking, and I just kind of gave you that look like, yeah, bud. <laughs> he's, he's look, at this point, teams are doing everything that they can to make sure that these players are living healthy and positive lifestyles, from fitness coaches to mental coaches to diet you know dietitians like they're putting them in the best possible situation in these bigger orgs to take care of themselves take care of their body if they have a prescription to adderall i don't have an issue with it now again if it's unprescribed and they're like buying it and they're they're using it if they're using it for the the purpose of hey i gotta stay awake to practice of course like you don't want to abuse it my that and like yeah sure Dr- i guess you can call it a drug addiction right that's never a good thing but let's not try to paint this picture that it's just gaming or it's just esports. And the fact that, like, oh, guys, did you hear in 2020 people are using Adderall? Yeah, no, this has been around for, like, since the dawn of time. Like, ask any college student, right? How do they stay up to do the tests? Now, if you really want to talk about the issue at hand, it's the fact that these guys, these professional gamers, feel the need to play 14 hours a day just to keep up with the competition. Uh, yeah. That, that's probably the issue. The, the larger picture is not people doing Adderall. It's honestly just using and abusing the employee, which in this case is the professional gamer. That, that's really going to be hard to change because if you're not doing it, of guess course. what? Like the next kid well, and, and you know, the is that's is, willing to put in that like kind of time and with effort. A, with a professional athlete, if you ever said, hey, would you do? Would you work out for 12 hours a day? They'd probably say, hell yeah. But fortunately for them, they also have to let their bodies recover. Professional gamer different. doesn't have to worry about that yet. Now, maybe down the road, these health trainers will be like, guys, you're doing more damage to your eyes. You're doing more damage to your brains. After nine hours, you're not getting any better for that day. So yeah. let's t- let's take away, like, let's refuel your brain refuel your give your hand muscles a break right um but yeah <laughs> who am i to talk? look at me you think i know anything about health no uh in fact maybe you could tell me where to get some adderall maybe i need some of that maybe <clears throat> Actually, that'll help fun fact if it surprises anyone i was definitely uh prescribed that as a kid anyways so there's that um yeah yikes Yikes that people think that that's breaking news. No, I agree. And then mine is, um, mine's taking us back to, back to our, our good old pride and joy. Uh, this is back to infinity ward. Um, currently they've deployed a new update, which has broken land lobbies as well as player lobbies. Basically what it's doing is if you're on console, 
you can only have now a max of 10 people join the server. And if you have additional people join, it's like crashing the lobby out. Well, the problem is you say, well, hey, Nuj, it's, it's five on five, like not a big deal. Um, it's not going to clash crash their lobbies. Well, the problem is you also have observers who have to join these <laughs> lobbies and they join on PC. And then you have coaches who join the lobbies as well because they use their stuff to, to be able to obviously help out and, and do what they can. So there's... Um, you'll see some crazy tweets like Ian Crim6 uh, has tweeted out that, uh, you know, it's a game breaking bug. This has happened a few years back and it really did ruin the tournament. You can't just roll back and play on previous patches. Like it's not that easy when you're talking about console and, and it's not PC. And so right now you can't join a land lobby at all. They're broken. If you try to do it for, you know, just you and your buddies. But on top of that, we have an event coming up in Atlanta and there hasn't been a solution to this yet. So um, hopefully this gets sorted out soon, but it's just a, another one of those things is, you know, you push a patch and it's a, a game breaking bug. It's not like just a minor little, you know, Hey, Oh, Hey, this gun's a little overpowered. Let, let's revert it or whatever. You know, you're talking about breaking things in the game that were already functioning and working. And I just want to add on to it. Cause this is a two part yikes for them. They also had the, you know how you can change the colors of your um, clan tag, nameplate? Right? The clan tags. Well, they added a, a, you know color schematics to it. Basically, if you changed it to blue, it disabled auto assist for your enemies. And so console players, again, were bug? having a tough that time. That's a I, true bug. Like, you, you know, know when the software coders are like, guys, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I added code to make it blue, and now the auto aim is gone. Well, what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> it's like it, it's just crazy. So it's just you know a handful of things for again for Call of Duty that you know make you question if they know what they're doing. The only bright side, Tim, for Call of Duty this week has been the fact that you've had all these leaks for the Battle Royale mode. And it looks like we might be getting that as early as Tuesday, potentially. But um, that does look like it could bring a lot of players back into the game, especially if they make it free to play for, for everybody. Um, I could see that spiking player numbers like crazy. So maybe there will be a light at the end of this tunnel for, for Call of that, Duty. Though. Like, don't, because with the last um, last one, what was it? Blackout. Blackout. Um, that was not free to play at the start, right? Yeah, it became free to play as later on, I believe. But like it originally, did. I think they made it, it a standalone play. cheaper. Like you could buy it for thirty bucks, and now for yeah. Listen, just come out guns blazing. Put your put your foot on every other BR game's throat, and make the game free to play, and let people jump in right away. Yeah, we've learned. We have seen. Plenty of examples down the road or, you know, in, in years past on that, that just works. It just free to play. You're going to get your money through skins or whatever. Just make it free to play. It works. Yeah, it works for better or for worse. Free to play. It, works. It'll benefit your game's longevity. And the longer people play, the more skins or money they're willing to invest. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree, especially when they still have over half a year left of content coming out. If you make your BR really good, you might have more people that are willing to buy the game for the additional content that comes out in, in the MP. Yeah, exactly. All right, so there's your yikes of the week. What yikes will we have this week? If you have any yikes of the week, hit us up on Twitter at the Center Ring, um, or you can also drop them in our Discord. There are sometimes we'll use yours. We'll even give you a shout out on the show. How about that? If you give us a good one. Uh, we'll we'll read it and talk about it on the show for next week's yikes of the week. Um, so with that being said, let's throw it over to our interview with Nifty from Team Envy. I'm excited for our next guest. He made the switch from console pleb to PC master race a long time ago and never looked back. At the age of 22 years old, he is thought of by many to be the to a top. NA talent in CSGO, former member of Renegades, and now a key cog of Team Envy's comeback into the scene. Welcome to the center ring, Noah Nifty Francis. Thank you very much. Super happy to be here. 
What is up, I man? We're, we're excited to have and you. I love podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I love them all. No, we're excited to have you on. Obviously, you know, you being in our backyard, we met the other week at the uh, the homestand for the Dallas Fuel. So we wanted you on for a long time. And now with Dallas Fuel homestand, baby, we'll talk about that because that was pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, now that with new roster for NVC as go and kind of a new year, figured it'd be a good time to have you on to, to talk about that. But let's jump right into that, that fuel homestand where we met last week. I mean, that was, that was pretty nuts. I don't know. Have you ever seen anything like that specifically for an esport? <clears throat> so I, I've, yeah, I've, yes, I've seen bigger obviously as an esport. Um, just because Counter-Strike events can go to, 15 to 20,000 people yeah, with in the majors watching, and everything, but I know? guess as far I mean, as like it's, a home it's game. It's beautiful. Yes, a home game. I was at the very first one uh, that they hosted last year in, I want to say, the April or Center. May. Yeah, uh, and that was that was awesome. You know, that's really where I got to experience the first time, you know, what kind of a fan base the Dallas Fuel actually has. So uh, I was thoroughly impressed last year. And this year I knew we were using a different location, but what excited me the most was the fact that they brought myself and Jane Wizrobe and Taimu in to do the Burleson high school event. Yeah. Um, which was incredible. I mean, I didn't, I didn't expect to get a lot of people coming up and asking me questions or like, Hey, you know, like, Oh, that's nifty. Just because I, I understand where I'm at, you know, like I understand the environment. This is an overwatch event. Uh, I'm probably not going to have too many people come up and that's okay with me. So I made valuable time with the people that did. So I thank them of course. Um, but it turns out the person that I actually spoke to the most was the, uh, staff, uh, person that they hired, you know, to kind of stand next to the booth. Right. Um, we spoke the most and he was actually super cool. Hopefully I, I gave him some advice or taught him something that could help him bring his, his stuff to the next level. So, um, but yeah, dude, homestand was sick. Any part of you that wishes that I obviously CS is a bigger esport, and we all know that, right? But any part of you that wishes there was this home in the way type rivalry within CS? Um, if there was, there'd probably be a lot more traveling, uh, and traveling in Counter Strike is pretty crazy already. Um, so maybe, maybe not. Honestly, um, I'm still not sure what the best system for Counter-Strike actually would be. Um, but we're working on that right now, uh, as you can see, with like the three different leagues that are going on, all this crazy stuff. So, you kind of good because I actually want to ask about that. Or, you know, <laughs> I don't know how much we're allowed to go into it. Obviously, the decision hasn't been made publicly for NV yet. But we, we've seen all the, the chatter go back and forth. Obviously, Thorne kind of being the spokesperson for, for B-Side. He's been pretty vocal out there. And, and ESL is having to respond to a lot of negative criticism that it's at least we've seen publicly. Who knows what the deals are really you know, behind closed doors and how all that's going. But any, any thoughts on your end of, of, you know, is this good for the Counter-Strike ecosystem, the way this is all happening publicly? I don't know if it's good, but I know that it's necessary. Um, only because teams, organization, it doesn't matter if you're team liquid, you know, and you can have the best team in every game and all these like great sponsors and sources of them actually making profit and income, right, as, a, as an org. But it's just not profitable ha to have a Counter Strike team right now. It's just not, uh, unless you're like the very, very best team. Um, so, you know, this is a collaboration from many teams trying to make it uh actually profitable right to, to try to actually keep the space going counter strike going as a whole um just because the 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 kind of layout that we've had over the past couple of years uh it's just too erratic too crazy you know i mean there's a lot of competition and there still is a lot of competition uh one thing that i despise about it is just overlapping events um or or overlapping an event with a qualifier for a bit another big event like yeah. that's the worst thing ever the worst thing ever 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 you should never have to choose um so yeah i, I mean I, it's really tough to say how it's going to turn out but i am nonetheless excited do you think the players under like are on board also in terms of the change that's going to be needed on their end also right because this is the the salaries have skyrocketed through CS, right? And and that's been a big part of the issue is the transfer fees and all that the, you see associated with some of these contracts. So obviously there's going to be a change that not only comes to the tournament organizers, but the players as well. And do you feel like the consensus across the board is that the players are also okay with this change? 
Um, there may be a few that that truly are okay with it, but most players that say they're okay with it, they're full of shit. I mean, <laughs> it's just the way it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, everyone. I, here's what I believe, right? When you're a professional, anything really, but like especially as an athlete or esport player, you put like your whole life is this. You know, your whole life is this. And you really don't know when your game or maybe just you, depending on what kind of competitor you are, how hard do you work, will just be eradicated. And so I, I think it is important for people, for players to earn as much as they possibly can, right, without inflating the, the market like crazy and, you know, all this kind of crazy shit. Um, but I do think that that players... Doesn't doesn't even matter. It has nothing to do with skill level or, or results or nothing. I just think that based on what they are putting in for their teams themselves, like they just they deserve to be paid well. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what it's going to look like for players down the line here soon. Um, but even if if it's more balanced, that's okay too. Now, are you part of the CSPPA yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm part of the group, but like honestly, the only ones that have power in the cspPA are are the board members um which are like i think there's like roughly seven to nine board members yeah. and then there's a couple administrators i know scoots is kind of like an advisor um but really those are the guys that will make the final decisions on everything um i mean we get to throw in like our thoughts and, and ideas and stuff but it's really tough to to know exactly what's going on um, <laughs> How often do they reach out are going on. for like second opinions? Because from an outsider's view, every time we see like these leagues pop up and then all of a sudden someone's bitching about something, whether it be the players or people in the scene are bitching that the players are getting shafted in it. And then it's always the question of, well, what happened to the players association? Do they not have any power? Like, do they do they reach out? Is there any the truth players to association that or is there has, behind the scene? It has power. Uh, it doesn't have unlimited power. Um, it's really kind of just like sometimes I think the players' association goes against itself uh, for and for what it's meant to do. Um, if I was a board member, I would clearly change these things, but I'm not, so it's okay. So right now, I can kind of just like spectate and see what happens, and basically learn from other people's mistakes, um, which is what I like doing anyway. <laughs> so. Um, because I know that when I am when I am in those positions to to do something, I'll I'll always make sure that I do the right thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, they can they can make decisions and help make decisions, but at the end of the day, it's 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 all about coming to a middle ground right now when it comes to anything to do with the leagues or anything like that. And it's it's tough to find sometimes because honestly, the players are very 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 demanding. Um, However, I can understand why we are because there's a, it consistently happens. The same things happen at events um, or when new leagues get brought up or new discussions. The same things reoccur and uh, they're the same issues that we've talked about before. So eventually people just get irritated and it, it gets all out of whack. So, so you brought yeah. up, and, and it's a very good point, like football players never have to worry about a new football. Like and the NFL players never have to worry about a new NFL coming out and then just wiping out their careers overnight. Whereas you as a professional gamer, Project A is right around the corner and every, you know the hype train is all aboard for that and people are saying it's going to be the Counter-Strike killer. Do, do you always nah, have that thought it, in the back of your head? Nothing's going to be the Counter-Strike killer. Nothing will. Nothing, nothing will be the Counter-Strike killer, bro. This, this, this game is here to stay. It's going to be the ancient dinosaur bones in the ground when it does die. So, now, this could be a Counter-Strike competitor, though. I do feel yes, like it has so to be. so that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a competitor. And what I hope, because we haven't had any competitors, you know, yet Valve has still done such a great job in the past couple of years updating our game and trying to come as close as possible to perfecting it mechanically, right, and all the other kind of, like, itsy-bitsy shit, right, that needs to be fixed in Counter-Strike. And they've done great at that, but what they haven't had to introduce something like how Dota has like the international or, you know, some sort of maybe even like Valve League or something. Uh, what they haven't done is had a competitor. And I think Project A will be that for us. Um, it will ultimately help Counter-Strike grow. And people who are 
chasing after something that they don't even believe in in Counter-Strike will now have something new that they can go after that's similar to Counter-Strike, but it's a brand new, brand new field. So it's open season for anyone. Um, so I think it'll introduce a, many more opportunities for players, uh, managers, coaches, teams, the games themselves, right? Like it's, it's going to be great for everything. So, you know, you, you made the switch from Call of Duty, what you must have been around like 16, 17 years old, I'm guessing around there, um, going over to Counter-Strike. And so when you, you did that, you know, maybe it was, it was a move. I've heard some of your other previous interviews that you, you kind of, I don't want to say lost the passion, but Counter-Strike piqued your interest enough for you to make that move. And obviously it's grown to become a, a massive part of your life. How in love with this game are you still? Still? Yeah, to this oh. day. I I love this game when there are a particular set of people around me with same goals, same intentions, and we get along. That's when I love this game. Because as a professional Counter-Strike player, 98% of the time, it, it's very easy for the majority of professionals or amateurs in attempt to becoming professionals can honestly hate their time playing this game. It's it's very easy to do that. It takes mental toughness. It takes insane amount of skill to, to be able to keep yourself level-headed, interested in the game, loving the game, right, so that you're not wasting your time, right? Um, but, yeah, like you said, like, it was it was definitely just another game piqued my interest when I started playing CS back in the day. Um, you know, like, I, I still enjoyed playing COD, but once I started playing Counter-Strike casually with my friends, I was like, dude... It's on. This game is sick, and I am talented, you know? So, I don't know. I think I think this is the way to go, because at that same time, that was when the Fnatic era was booming. And, like, it was just around the corner, 2015, right? So, majors were just getting going, and the hype was coming on. And it, it, was, just, it was just perfect timing. But at the same time, I had been playing COD since I was, like, I don't know, man, 10, 10 or something. And I was just... I, I saw the direction that it was going in, and I was just... I just kind of decided, like, I, I don't think i want to be part of this out of curiosity so. was was cs your first fps on pc first and only wow so that's that that is interesting because we've talked about on the podcast before where for a new fps player cs can be so daunting like the like we have a buddy who uh i'm not gonna lie to you nifty is terrible and he just doesn't understand the recoil control he's trying to jump and shoot and climb ladders and shoot and, like, for a fresh FPS player, they just don't understand, like, hey, the crosshair's on his head and I'm shooting. What's going on? Like, how did you I – mean, was it just that competitive mentality then that kind of persevered through? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really was. I, I kind of just picked up the game, like, pretty quickly. Um, I, I kind of understood a little bit of what it took to, to climb a ladder, you know. So I, I'd say I had, like, a, a minimal – competitive edge <laughs> over some of the other competition trying to climb that ladder um i mean it did it like i've i've said in many other interviews like it really did take me a little while to get used to the mouse and keyboard like i would wake up every single day and my first time on the pc that day playing counter-strike was dreadful dude i mean it felt like i hadn't ev i hadn't ever even played the game before you know and i was just like why does this keep happening you know and, and then I, I i just had to keep reassuring myself really just like okay you know i'll i'll get it eventually you know one day i will touch my mouse and it won't feel like this foreign object <laughs> that i've never picked up before you know uh, but building that uh building that consistency was was key so i wanted so you, oh go ahead Anuch. so you you know you talked about mentioning the players around you is what gives you that passion to play. And I kind of want to transition into the lineup, right? This is like, um, obviously a, a big change for the team. Uh, this is now an international roster. And just want to get your take on, like, how did this lineup come together? Um, what are you excited about? And, and do you, you know, now feel that passion playing with these guys? This, I'm honestly so happy to return to, like, this, like, semi-international roster. I mean, we have a Canadian, so we can we can't we have to call it like a North American roster still, but he it's still different. Like even when you're a Canadian, I don't know what it is, man. It's just well, fun. Canadians it's just fun. Different. It's just fun when you have all these different like personalities and people that have grown up in different parts of the world where they're raised differently. The way that they think is different. Their perspective on Counter Strike is different. 
right? Their thoughts and ideas, they might they may match yours sometimes, but it's just a different way of thinking. And it's interesting, man, because you can just learn so much from it, so much faster than you can with a group of five or six Americans. In my opinion, I don't know. This is just from me from experience. But uh, I love it because the guys that we picked up, insane passion for this game. Insane, like especially like Legia already. I mean, this guy, this guy has already, I've spoken with him about things and we talk about Counter-Strike. That's it. That's all we talk about is Counter-Strike. Um, and the things we talk about are just incredible, bro. Just absolutely mind-blowing. Like I've been, I've been wanting to have somebody that I can bounce with back and forth off of like ideas about like the game and how a team, how a team can be ran, right? Like the actual ceiling that yeah. a team can actually operate at, because I feel like Astralis has been the best at getting close to that, but I feel like you can go way higher. Like you can go way higher in the way that like your players live, live their lives and just the way that they act, you know, the food that they consume, when they consume it, how much they consume it, right? Working out, spending time together and just meditation, right? Thinking about thinking about things like all these different things, the heights that you can reach are unbelievable, man. And that is my goal with this team is, so with, is, to, is to reach a height that hasn't been. So with Envy's new headquarters, you're obviously next door to the fuel, to uh, Empire now. You got your guys is there. Other <laughs> Envy people are over there. I know Mike's hired you guys like a personal trainer. On that note, then, about taking your team and busting through that glass ceiling, do all those little factors go a long way when it comes to, like, the org actually caring? Yes, yeah, so all those things are resources. Those are things that we need to use. It is, it is up to us. And when you're, when you're a part of this team, and this is just how it needs to be around Envy, it doesn't matter if you're the most talented, skilled individual in the world. If you're not doing these things that are required of you and or that, that is scientifically proven will make you a better player, better athlete, better person. You'll feel better. You'll be more confident, right? You'll be able to focus more. That's the, that's the key thing, focus. Nobody knows how to focus and especially focus for an extended period of time. So all of those things are resources and it is up to each and every single player to go and seek out those resources themselves, right? Because they, they are right here in the building. You can schedule workouts with, with uh, Miniker, who is our personal trainer, and you can schedule sessions with Mike, who is our mental trainer. Um, and, and they are there all the time to speak to you, right? Provide this outside perspective, any ideas that, that you can't think of yourself or you're not getting from your team, you know, they, they're, they're there to provide you with those things. Um, and those things themselves are coming along as well because we have four teams in this building and you know so we're looking at roughly with like all the the crazy roster that like Dallas Field and Overwatch teams have to have where you have like 12 players or something right. you know we're looking at like 40 people 40 players plus coaches you know the whole coaching staff so you know these are all people that need to be involved in this in this movement and what we're doing here if you're not then you're doing it wrong so you talked about resources that you have internally. Who, as an in-game leader, do you look either try to pattern your game after, or or take a lot of you know, in the sense, watch a lot of their footage to see how they do it? Who on the outside has been a big resource to you in terms of watching watching gameplay? Strategically, Gubby. Uh, as far as different forms of being able to lead your team, I, I actually consider myself. Almost similar to like Golden. I honestly Golden and, and and me, like we have similar styles of how we like to call and lead our teams. Um, you know, I mean obviously many people would say Glaive, right? There are there are tons of things that you can learn from Glaive. Glaive does yeah. great things, great, great things. Um, but for me, like big <clears throat> when it comes to strategy, um, just you know, it's funny because back in the day, early renegades, uh, I watched a lot of space soldiers because we we actually ended up playing them a bunch of times, and now I'm playing with one of their players, which is sick. Um, but yeah, Space Soldier's major was a very interesting leader. The way that he handled his his squad, and it was like it was like like Turkish power or something. <laughs> just like the way that he called, he was just like, "All right, rush this over and over and over again. Throw a little fake, rush it again. Like it's just it's just cool, man. Like he knew how to use his players." Um, 
but and 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 I honestly I hope that more in-game leaders develop like over time and and they start more of them just start developing coming out because there are just not enough especially in NA. You know, there there are a few that have like tried to be in-game leaders on and off and and I even switched off for a moment because I wanted to give I wanted to learn other roles in depth. You know, and as an in-game leader, you don't always get the time to do that. So do you um, think uh, the excuse of being an in-game leader is is dead? Because that used to be like, oh well, he's bottom fragging, but he's he's an IGL, so it's okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that that I would say that excuse, yes, definitely is dead. I mean, there's really no excuses for anyone in the team. You know, I mean, it, but the whole like bottom fragging and and. and <sighs> I don't I don't I don't really understand it. I understand it as a spectator. Like you you have to go off of like stats, uh, you know, uh, analysis uh or analysts have to look at stats as well. And they really do mean something, especially when you look at the best players in the world, right? Like obviously they're consistently in the green, plus 20, plus 20 this event, plus 60 this event, whatever. Right? And and yes, the best players will consistently do that. But when you operate inside of a team, everyone has jobs. There are certain kills that players are designated to get, right? Like, yeah. so there are other players in the team that are meant to be doing nothing <laughs> yeah. when when this is happening. So it's not like we're five people r running around chasing kills. No, dude, this is most rounds are calculated. The only things, the only part of rounds in Counter Strike that are not calculated are mid rounds because you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You don't always know how the other team's going to react. And you also don't know how your team's going to react. Sometimes you you can have you can have protocol, and the situation still may even call for somebody making some sort of out of the box play, you know, or or out of protocol play. You know, it's very possible the millions trillions of of mid rounds and potential situations, millions and trillions. Um, so no, I I never understood that. I mean, obviously everyone has to hold themselves accountable for getting kills that you need to get. It's the easy kills, the kills that you should get especially when you win via positioning, right, and, and teamwork and communication. Those are the kills you need to get. No one expects you to win a 1v3, though, you know? Was learning how to call mid-round probably the toughest part about being an in-game leader? Uh, learning how to call in mid-round, really, it's, it, it's actually really easy to call mid-round um, if you have proper pieces in your team providing you with the right information. Because it's not like the IGL sees all, hears all, knows all, right? You need to hear a lot from your teammates because you're putting them into positions, right? That will provide them with information that they have to then have the skill to be able to relay to you in the shortest amount of time possible so that you can then make the decision of what you need to do next and how, how to articulate yourself to tell your team to do exactly that. That's the tough part. It's the it's the transitioning from player to player and how good your communication is, and then I have to be able to decide. Has communication been a barrier so far for you guys, or how has the communication been just because of all the different nationalities that you have? Um, has that been an issue at all? Sometimes. It's mostly funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> I have a good time with it, really. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's funny because we have... So, Kalex, his name is Buddha, and... Sometimes, like, I'll just make a call, or, well, even even anyone, right? If anyone makes a call, like, yo, okay, let's B-split now. You know, he'll just be like, bad? <laughs> and it's, <laughs> like, because he's got this very harsh... He replaces the double Yeah, <laughs> this very harsh, like, Turkish accent, and we just, yeah. we, we have a great time with it, especially when we go back and, like, we kind of, like, watch some of our games or listen to ourselves, um, you know, just because we need to, we need to be able to review ourselves and improve. Um, and we talk about these mo <laughs> these moments, and it's just it's hilarious because he's just standing somewhere waiting for something to happen. And he's like, "What did you say?" <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's great, but um, yeah, no, we we honestly haven't had too much. Uh, I think I think luckily for Leggy, actually has great English. He's been in the states before, um, but he's also older. He has great English for Mishu and Kalex. Uh, Mishu, I think, takes English lessons already and or already has. Uh, Calix wants to start, but um, both of them are pretty decent. Um, I think, I think both of them are kind of lucky that I can articulate myself and almost put my myself in the position of like a European, 
and I can talk to them as if I'm like a European player. Give a little bit of the accent or tone or, you know, I always, always, yeah. I'm, I'm throwing accents out mid game. <laughs> I'm throwing all kinds of shortened English language and all this kind of stuff, man. And, and I know that like Moose and Ryan, like they're going to understand what I'm saying, yeah, you know, yeah. so I need to make it applicable for the other two as well. Just uh, next time Ichu screws up, just say Matka Buska. He'll understand it. <laughs> you know, who on this team, uh, out, of, out of the new additions here, um, who has really surprised you the most? Or what has something, you know, one characteristic or in-game characteristic of them that has really taken you by surprise? You didn't know they had that ability or they were that good at that, you know, that particular role. Okay, great question. Um, so, Moose... I wasn't really sure what to think of him as a player before he was on my team or before we seeked him out. <clears throat> um, I just knew that he played for United. Play, I've played him against him a bunch of times. I knew he was like, okay, this kind of player. But you really never understand how a player actually like works, how their mind works, and how they operate until you're on a team with them. You know, And you actually get to pick their brain and listen to them speak and ask them why. And then they tell you why, right? So... Um, one thing that he does really, really great um, is there are not, it's honestly undervalued, there are not a lot of players, um, professional players inside of North America that keep their eye very, very closely on the kill feed. And it doesn't matter which part of the map they're on. If a, a fight goes down and we kill somebody from the other team, he instantly says like, okay, that's A player, that's Cat player, that's B player, right? So now that makes all of us aware like, okay, what the fuck? If we just killed the A player in B, something weird's going on. You know what I mean? Like, we, yeah. we're, we need yeah. to think a little bit extra about this, right? Or it might have, give him information as a lurker to make a play. Um, and not many players do that. And it's honestly a very valuable skill because uh, I remember on Renegades, Ozzer would do this. And you need at least one person on your team that's going to shout that out all the time. That's yeah. the A player. That's the B player. That's You know what I mean? Um, so... It's very, it's very vital for success, especially for me. Like that's very important for me when it comes to like mid rounding and stuff because that's great information and invaluable. Uh, so we won't take up too much of your time, but I got just a couple more questions. When you were on Renegades, have you ever done a shoey? <laughs> no, never done a shoey. Have you ever seen someone do a shoey? Like, is that an actual? Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, people get hyped and do it. That's a real yeah, thing. Yeah, one thousand percent. I never did because it's gross. Um, yeah, I mean it's kind of gross, and that, it's just not something that like I would do. Like if you knew me as a person, I just probably would never do that, even if I was like drunk or something. Um, but I'd never do it. And the other reason is, I swear this is not a flex at all. I just would always have some very valuable shoes on, and <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't. I, like, yo, no, I'm not gonna do a shoey. Uh, <laughs> you know, a shoey, a Yeezy, a probably isn't a the, the greatest idea. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not gonna do What's it. What's been so. your uh, favorite part about being in Dallas so far? Oh man, uh, dude, just, just the just the like infrastructure i think like i i've always thought like before i actually lived in dallas um i lived well i'm i'm from upstate new york kind of like in the country and then i lived in a suburb of atlanta for selfless for maybe three months which was nice but it wasn't in the city and then i lived an hour north of detroit in a suburb with renegades <clears throat> not in the city but also nice and I always knew from the time when I was a young kid, like, I'll probably live in a big city one day, and it'll be fucking sick. And I get here, and it's exactly what I thought it would be. It's exactly, it's so many things to do, so many people to meet, right? You can, you can make friends and have friends and do things anywhere, anytime, all the time. Um, you know, and if you want to function in a big city, you got to take care of yourself, too, because <laughs> people are going to notice. So, um, you know, that's, that's another good reason to just have, like, personal yeah. upkeep, you know? Um, but yeah, tons of, tons of nightlife options, restaurants everywhere, you know, yeah. and <clears throat> just everything, man. I don't know. It's just so much fun. Do it's you stay fun. around the victory park or uptown area? Is... Yeah. So I don't have a car because, uh, I, I don't really like need to go anywhere. I, yeah. I honestly, like everything we have is like right here in this, like probably like two mile radius at most. Um, and if we want to go any farther, we just like take an Uber, 
but yeah, like this, this area is beautiful. Yeah, but I've been all around Dallas. I know it. Don't so. move to the burbs. You move to the burbs, you look like this. I've <laughs> I've been out to the burbs of of Texas before. <laughs> <laughs> there is no reason for you. Got a killer mustache, bro. What are you talking this about? This is true. I do look pretty. <laughs> My mustache. True. It's the only thing I have going for me, really. It's it's really the the sh- on the short list. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you guys? I know you guys are going. Is it Serbia? Is that what mm-hmm. you guys are flying out to? Greg was telling me. It's like you're have you, you've been there before. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I love Serbia, man. Serbia is awesome, dude. There's just there's it's great nightlife. Um, you know, there are there are honestly some beautiful people there. And it's always a great time to go because um I'll I'll probably get to spend a minor amount of time with my ex coach, Kassad. Um, and I'll get to see like Nico and Yanko and, you know, we'll probably like go out and have some fun one of these nights or something. Um, but like, obviously primarily why we are there is, is to just focus and practice. Like we're getting in the trenches, you know, you go to the European boot camp, you're in the trenches. Um, you know, as healthy as you possibly can maintain yourself, you still want to be playing counter-strike between nine to 12 hours a day. So we will, we will, uh, we'll be there for almost two weeks. Um, and as soon as we leave there, we'll go straight to Boston for PAX. Um, and then we'll do some like team uh, promotion and stuff for like Predator um, and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll come straight back here to Dallas, get about a, a week of practice, let the jet lag wear off, all that stuff, and then play the closed qualifier for the minor. Um, so that is our next goal is like make it to the minor. Two, two best of threes. That's it. That's all it takes. It's nothing. Just baby steps. Baby <clears throat> steps. And now with the Oh, yeah. Roster. One step at a time for sure. Look, you ever have trouble doing something in life? Bro, just one step at a time. Just break it down. Just break it down. I was I was talking to uh so I have two mental trainers just because I, I like as many perspectives as possible. You just got a lot going on. So yeah, so I was talking to my other mental trainer today. And even as like wise as he is and and uh you know he's lived a lot of life, like he was telling me like, yeah, and like I just split from like this one department I work for and um you know, I've got like all this kind of crazy stuff. I'm working on my apartment right now. You know, like financial stuff and all that stuff. And I was just like, "Yo, <laughs> stop right there, one step at a time." <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, "You're right, dude. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> one step at a time." You know what I mean? In-game so, leader, inside and out. Hey, man. It, it, yeah, it's like <laughs> even as an in-game leader, when it comes to Counter Strike, I obviously like I have to think some steps ahead, but I don't put too much thought into it. I almost like just just like plant the seed plant the yeah. seed for the thought right so like if we're on round five and i i know i'm gonna have to make a big call in round eight i just plant the seed right i just tell myself that all right round eight or a couple rounds from now because i know we're gonna win these next two they're probably double eco right i gotta make sure i make a, a proper call coming round eight right so you know I, I just plant the seed and then slowly as the rounds build the thought evolves done you know sometimes you got to do that in counter-strike but when it comes to you have a lot of things going on in life one, time. one step at a time. One step like it. Like well, dude, it. this has been uh, badass. Like I said, we've wanted you on the show for a while. We're obviously big fans of Envy and everything that they've going on. When they left CS, it was depressing. And then I don't want to take credit, uh, but they definitely asked us who they should pick up. And we definitely said you. And then like a month later. <laughs> Shay can confirm this. This is actually this not, is... not to say that they chose you because we told them to. But they asked us as a friendly conversation, and we both uh, I love your career, man. We're we're big fans. Um, can, man, we wish you all the continued success. Hopefully, you guys have a a wonderful run. Get a chance to play in the major, whichever league you choose in. We look forward to seeing you all competing again. And so, um, wish you all the success inside and outside of CS. Yeah, I really appreciate all that stuff. Honestly, like to the heart i appreciate all that stuff that's funny you told me that uh, about like shay and stuff that's that's cool but it's good but it's good by them you know doing some research research talking to people you know hey what do you think about this guy that guy whatever you know whatever the case is. but i'm happy to up. be here I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are fans of envy and and honestly to everyone else there that, that listens to this watches this um you know we appreciate all you guys and i promise as long as i'm part of this team part of envy we're gonna be sick yeah appreciate you joining us today man it's been a lot of fun all right, yeah, I, I feel like you guys are really serious about this, so you know, yeah. I wish you like all the success possible. And you know, if you ever need anything from me, just let me know, okay? I'm here. Well, wish you all the best, dude. Awesome. <laughs> Take it easy, okay? Right. Safe all travels. Right, Have a good time. All right, and thank you again to Nifty and uh, 
Team Envy for setting up that interview. Pretty last notice, we got the text message that day and said, hey, you guys available for Nifty tonight? And we were like, uh, yeah. He is a clean-looking individual, is he not? Like, very well put together, complexion well grade, hair on point. Um, it was cool. If, if you um, go back onto the YouTube, for those of you that are listening, you can go back and actually watch the interview. You'll see Nifty on there. And you, you get to see a little sneak peek of the NV headquarters. Might even get a, a Mike Rufail sighting in the back as he walks behind. I believe we saw Justin and a couple of these guys um, roaming around. But yeah, he did interview live from the headquarters. And definitely a big thank you, um, you know, to, to Greg, especially. The, the, you know, he's PR for um, NV and is just an amazing guy. So thank you for setting that up. And thank you to NV again for, for allowing us to take some of your players' time. So really appreciate that. Let's get into wow, that was loud. E news. Uh, we got quite a bit to get to. We already discussed the complexity getting out of the major by Smash of all teams. I'm sure, Jason Lake loved that one, especially after riding the high from their premiere. But what can you do? And Overwatch games from China are had they have been rescheduled. They're moving to Seoul. And they will be played throughout weeks six and seven. They will be uh, streamed business as usual, as far as I can tell. So I think yeah, they're, they're going to release. I haven't announced the exact dates yet, but they yeah. did let us at least know it's week six and seven. Yeah, so dates boring. and times will come soon. But good to see that they have found a solution to that because that, that is a, you know, that what are you supposed to do? That's, that's life. That's tough. You know, that's programming your clan tag to be blue and taking away auto aim. Like, that's just. What can you do? Um, and then, of course, we had the Philadelphia homestand um, this week. Of course, I think it was originally, I think there was supposed to be one in China, which is why uh, weeks two, three, uh, and I believe even four are a little light on matches just because they were supposed to have doubled, you know, um, events in China that obviously we just talked about were canceled. So for the Philadelphia Fusion homestand, you had... Uh, Florida going one and one, losing to uh, Philly, of course. So Philly, the home team, actually goes two and zero. Oh, so that's pretty dope to see. Washington beats Houston three zero, oh, and so does Florida. So there you go, Fuel fans. If you gotta hang your hat on anything, it's you got one more map win in your first week than Houston did. So there's, Houston deserved it. So there's. There's After that. the whole Astros fiasco, Houston deserved it this weekend. <laughs> deserved a little, little bit of everything that was coming out of this weekend. I'm sure they're, yeah. The whole city of Houston is probably taking it for that one. Though, so, Tim, uh, check this out. We meet, obviously, at the last homestand, we meet the manager for who? We talk to the GM for who? Vancouver. For Vancouver. Also, the GM for the Seattle Surge. And we told him, Tim, at that time, hey, you got to bench enable. If you want to have a chance this season, bench enable, move on from them. Old news, old championships. Don't want to hear it. Bring in some fresh blood. And Tim, what happens this week? Enable got his ass benched. Got benched. And so, no, we did not say that. But, however, that is a big benching. That is a benching that I actually did not see coming. Um, I thought they would have stuck with this lineup a little bit longer. Uh, enable was obviously, I mean, wasn't he on 100 Thieves last year when they won the championships? And so, I mean, it's, it's just crazy that one year, obviously, it's game to game. It changes. I get that. But um, Enable's a really big name in the COD scene. So a little surprised at how quickly they were willing to bench him. Hopefully, we can get Seattle Surge's manager or GM on here in the next few weeks. That is supposed to be the plan, at least. So um, we can we can ask a little bit about that then. But that, that's a big benching. I mean, that that's yeah. a big name and a big benching. It sends a message, Anuj. It For sure. It sends a message. In Battle Royale news, Red Reserve set to relaunch with PUBG Mobile after closing in April of 2019. This is all still while players and staff are claiming that they still are owed money. Now, it's, it's under hundreds of thousands is what I'm hearing. They do have a new CEO, so let's not cast stones where they shouldn't be casted, but that is a bit awkward. So like, unfortunately, that's not how the average 
fans mind to work it doesn't matter if it's a new ceo right. your name oh some people's favorite players money and those players are talking about it and so y you are them i mean yeah. i know it, it may be financially and legally you may not be held liable but know that your name is tied to them so if you're gonna buy an org well, and i'm assuming you're aware of this you know you, you have to find a way to deal with the backlash you're gonna get here and also Nuj, i think it's just common courtesy to handle you know, if you have prior financial engagements, I just think it's right you settle those before maybe launching like a dozen little projects afterwards, because then maybe you can't get your first financial arrangement in order. It's just a thought. Maybe Red Reserve can heed to that warning. In other news, I won't lie to you, Nuj. I don't know how to say her name. Pokemon. That's how you say it? Pokemon. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I was going to say. I just never care to know her name but i will give her respect because she donates of course she's a v wildly popular streamer she's partnered with hyper x and you'll see her all over she's um, got a Fortnite emote and and all that she's a very is that her Fortnite very... emote or did she uh -huh. just mimic the Fortnite emote what came first no, no, no. her or the she emote did... no she did a dance so basically they did a whole thing where submit a dance and we'll make it an emote well they worked with her on a dance uh, and gave her her own emote and emo then and she did it. it was okay. basically to show people that hey if you submit a dance you have a chance of your emote being in the game so they used hers that she did she's wildly wildly popular and successful um i would like to get to know her a little better take her out <laughs> to a nice dinner I'm sure a lot of people feel that way, but good on her. She donated 50k to the University of California, Irvine for their esports scholarship, um, class act, and and putting back into the people that you know helped you get to where you are. Well, and shit, that shows how much money this girl's got <laughs> to put 50k say, down. Let like let that is huge. So, because there are people on Twitter saying like you could give your money to a lot better things. Shut up, because this wasn't like giving money to esports. This is giving money to a scholarship. This is giving money to some kid's education that he maybe not ha could have had if it wasn't for this scholarship. So all you negative Nancys who's saying, well, she could probably put that to better use. She is putting it to good use. Like it's, it's giving some kid an education well, to follow his dreams of playing games while doing it. And there's plenty of other people that are donating to those causes that you're talking about. There's not too many, on the other hand, donating to, you know, UCI for an esports program. So she's doing something that that nobody is probably doing for that university, which which means, you know, hell of not to say it means more than donating to cancer and all that, but think about it. There are billions and billions yeah. of dollars already going to that research. So and it's something um, cool too. Like I, I know, like you said too, giving back to the community. Like, she is sponsored by HyperX and stuff, and you do see her in, like, the, f not headlining, but sometimes you'll see her involved with, like, eSports advertising, and she is not what I would consider eSports, right? I've never watched her stream, but I doubt it's, like, hardcore Yeah, but she, like, only plays, like, like League and, and Fortnite, so, right. you know, she plays games that attract the eSports community. She also hangs out with you know, several, several esports yeah. players. So I actually fact, follow her on Twitter, like so I, said, I see her, her lifestyle. This, yeah, I bet you do follow her on Twitter. I do, I do, I do. I'm a follower. I'm a follower. I, I enjoy her. She, she does no, I like job. the content. I like the content. I love the content. <laughs> but the fact that she's doing it for esports when she's not, like, overly tied into it, I thought was yeah. pretty pretty cool of her. Um, in, on other news, yeah, Tim. Other, other news. Other, other news. So we'll take a left turn here. Half-Life Alex. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Alex. Um, Alex is it Alex. It's just the chick from Half Life Two, I assume. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Idiot. Alex, idiot. Well, this is like fan. what is this Half Life One and a Half basically? I think is how they're selling it, spinning it. I think it. so. I think it's like in between one and two. Uh, that comes out March twenty third. So do I need VR you, to play it though? You do. So I'll be busting my VR so headset I'm back out. Over to your house. Yes, and I told you I cleaned out my my closet today. Part of it was to like find an area to like put that stuff carefully because I just have it all over the place. So everything was together. I will be busting out the VR for that. So if you have a VR headset, that would be a good time to bring it out because Alex will be available on March 23rd to I think all VR platforms. So regardless if you have Oculus, um, the Steam One, HTC, all will be able to to play the game. The only known surviving prototype of the Nintendo PlayStation mashup, of course, for those who don't know, there was once a time where PlayStation and Nintendo were going to be 
lovers and then it separated but it is up for auction it's up to 30k with around 20 days left so what why not we get this for the tcr office i think that would be badass that would be the coolest thing ever how much money would you have to make just to to get that like how much would my yearly salary have to be yeah couple mil it's because that's got to feel like that's got to feel like chump change yeah. to spend that kind that's a doing lot with that and and look thirty thousand. i think it was at like 35 just a couple days ago actually so it's even up from where it's at it's probably higher than that now um that doesn't seem like that much but again like i it is going to be sitting there yeah yeah no it's um and, i mean yeah you're not playing it you're not doing anything with it it's it's literally a showpiece what a showpiece, though. So, I mean, that that's definitely going to raise some eyebrows. Um, I'm curious. We'll, we'll update y'all. Probably won't bring this up again until it sells. We'll update you on the final number when it does. Yeah. And Activision and YouTube numbers have been posted. Of course, the deal to move Call of Duty League, Overwatch, WoW, uh, Hearthstone, anything Blizzard Activision related to YouTube have been released. The deal is for three years 160 million compared to Twitch's deal, which was two years for 90 million, I believe. Was it two years or one? It was two, right? It was two because it was the first two years of Overwatch League. But that was, that was just Overwatch League. Yeah. I think in that deal. I mean, th this is not a, it's not a bad deal. I know people were like, oh, you know, it's, it's less money than what they were getting because it's all the games included. I mean, you weren't going to get that. That was like early. Yeah. You know, think of that as like Twitch bought in early access. They didn't know what they were getting. And the world thought that would, Overwatch could potentially be the biggest game of all time. Yeah. So they Twitch paid a heavy duty bought price. bought Battalion 1944's Collector's Edition. Yeah, yeah, it's basically what that, <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what happened there. So I don't think this is a bad deal. I think the numbers are probably where they should be. Like, I don't feel like anyone's feeling like a winner or loser in this deal. It's just a... I think it's a good deal for both sides. I think it'll benefit both parties. So it's a it's a win win and, in my eyes. And I'd say to the people too that are like, well, this is not a good deal because they also got Hearthstone. All right, people. YouTube doesn't give a damn about Hearthstone. That hundred and sixty million was not any factor to Hearthstone's popularity. I promise you that. It was for Overwatch League and Call of Duty League. That is how they are viewing that money spent. WoW and the arena and the runs and Hearthstone, all that. That's just to sweep That's just the icing on the cake right there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not a... Again, I think the deal makes sense for both parties. Now it's going to be up to YouTube in my eyes to to show that they give a damn about how they promote this and, and show it to the world and to all their viewers. So, you know, this is on YouTube to make this a good investment. Yeah. Um, it's going to require both parties to care, right? This yeah. cannot just be YouTube giving over $160 million and then expecting Blizzard and Activision to do all the work bringing in the viewers. Like, you're going to have to do something a little more than just the money for YouTube side of it. Yeah. But, you know, if you're that person who cares and thinks it's a big deal, then good. If you're like me and it could have been a billion dollars. You know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll come back and say that was a bad deal. That's just how it is. Um, so, speaking of how it is, that's how it is for episode 213 of The Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. That does it for us. We will be back Wednesday night live on Twitch and juke.gg and everything else. You can catch the show, though, uh, live Wednesday. We'll post it Thursday. This will obviously be for Mondays. Follow us on Twitter, at The Center Ring. Our t website, tcr.gg, it's got all the links to everything else, including YouTube and Discord and Instagram and all that fun social media stuff you should be a part of. Again, if you listen on iTunes, you have, uh, please leave us a review. Five stars would be much appreciated. Everything else is just, you know, groovy as well. What else do we have for next show? We're shooting we'll guns tomorrow, so maybe we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. 
guns and NASCAR. That will be my President's Day. So how American can you get? But for Anuj, I'm Tim. We'll see ya. Lovely. Perfecto. Thank you guys for, for listening in. Appreciate thank y'all you, listening live. It always means a lot when you got at least, even if it's just a handful of people in the live audience, it, it means a lot. So I, I really appreciate y'all. Ginger Slayer, what's up? Um, Man, if YouTube did that to bring HOTS back, I should play HOTS. I think I still have Let HOTS me, installed. I'll show you guys what Tim and I are shooting tomorrow. Can I bring this on stream? Let's see. <laughs> Can you show guns on Twitch? I mean, it'd be kind of ridiculous if you couldn't, considering what you do on Twitch, right? If I show my tits at the same time, am I fine? Yeah, probably. Use the gun to hide your, your nipples. I'm just going to watching. Do they still update hots? I think they do. I think they still update it. Displaying firearms and other legal weaponry is okay. All right. Just don't point it at anyone or in any brandishing in any way is aggressive or harmful or potentially harmful is not permitted. Can I point it at all of our listeners? Let's see that right here. This is... <laughs> Believe it or a, not, a pistol. A Glock 19. This is the new... C-A-A-M-C-K conversion kit. They had the older one, which was the Micro Roni. This is the new one that just came out. Basically, I got a... I put it uh, like in front of your shirt. 30 round... Yeah, there you go. A little easier to see. 30 round mag in it. Got an additional 16 in the front, which I can make it 30 also. There is a light that I am ordering that will be put right here. A little... You can see there's a bottom bezel right here. You'll put a light attachment in there. But yeah, this is a Glock 19. Hold the grip in. <laughs> so ridiculous. It's easily into a bag. I have a hollow on it right now, but it's a cheap one. I am waiting for a big upgrade, which I'm saving up for. I don't know if you can see this or not. It's kind of difficult to see, but it's like you I'll just got done playing ammo. double weapon XP weekend. There's a thumb grip right here. So your thumb. Wow. Sits right here. But it is gorgeous. And this has basically given me two weapons with the one, if that makes sense. So I still have the Glock if I want to take it out for personal carry. Um, and now I have basically a shit, like a little mini SMG here uh, to go play around with. So we're going to be shooting this tomorrow. We'll take some video. I'll probably post it to our Instagram and YouTube for you guys to check out. I had a lot of people that were asking about it today on Twitter. So uh, we'll post some videos and stuff for y'all to see what it is like in action. I just knocked over so much ammo behind me. I'm so sad right now. <laughs> I was all I'm thinking about at the moment is I just backed up into an ammo stack. That's why I said. It looks like you just like maxed out uh, your MP7 and just added every single attachment you attachment. could i have so many things so like i'm changing out this guardrail to make it aluminum i'm getting the tack light here so i might add a laser here on the other side um on this guardrail there's a side guardrail here okay if I, if I angle it in the light yeah I'm yeah gonna, yeah. you can see a guardrail here um i'm gonna change out the grip you want me to get mine real trigger. quick I'll go get yeah mine. bring it out plan is to change out the trigger and the grips on the Glock, I'll probably leave everything else standard on it. There, I could change the slide and all that, but I'm not concerned with that. But yeah, let me open up restream. Talking. So I yeah. don't have anything near me. I have 
it looks so lame compared to yours, but it's a nice little uh, Beretta storm. Are you PS4 bringing that tomorrow? Storm. Yeah. Nice. So it's just a nine millimeter, nothing fancy. It, it's got like a little rail here. I think I could get like a light for it if I wanted to. Um, yeah, you can get a rail attachment for that. It has the bottom rail. I can see it from here. Yeah, yeah. You see kind of that little thing uh -huh. here. Yeah, so that's how the Glock, Glock has a pretty similar rail on the bottom. Yeah, next you can get some. You can get some badass sights for that too. They make like really um, mini red dot sights that you can like hold it up. I could just replace see. that with. Yeah, it's so not, I'm going to no send you a YouTube link for this guy that I watch. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so I like this gun. It's heavy. It's stainless steel. I, it's not plastic. I got the nice version of it. It's cool. Yes, Ginger. Moral of the story is do not fuck with the nuge. That's what. So what was funny is like a nuge, a nuge tweeted out that gun. It was like, oh, I got this gun, gonna go shoot it. So I was like, oh, I didn't know you were into firearms. Like, bro, we're from Texas. Like, of course. <laughs> and then I'm also gonna bring this gun. Uh, this is actually uh, was my wife's grandpa's gun who gave it to her dad. So it's my father-in-law's gun. And then he gave it to my wife when we bought the house. So we have like a, what a, is it? Let me see it. It is a bulldog 44. This thing. Huh. Okay. So I actually know what that is. That That's a pretty heavy shot. Uh, um, yeah, there is no way. So we went to go shoot it. I was shooting my nine. My brother's got you, a nine. Is Morgan using that one? Uh, so again, father-in-law gave it to my very petite wife. She saw me shoot it and was like, absolutely not. No, there's no way she would hate that. She yeah. would absolutely hate that. So I'll bring it tomorrow and we can, we can shoot really though. Uh, it's like after like two shots, you're like, okay, I'm, um, yeah, no, I'm not a big fan of shooting like 40 cal handguns. Like it's uh, it just, it's, it's a, it's a heavy load. Yeah. It's not a fun shot. It's more nerves because it's also probably my guess is that's a slow or heavy trigger pull on that is probably not a lightweight trigger it, so the anticipation of the pullback build, on those guns your entire way through so you can't oh, yeah. just do that though if you just yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then it's not yeah. As bad but no that's no. tomorrow so tomorrow's president's day we have the day off so we're going to shoot guns in the morning and then I'm going to come home I'm going to watch the Daytona 500 cuz they're it's starting at 4 cuz it was delayed today Going to make a steak and then order pizza. Like Dude, it's the most sounds... American thing. So that's actually quite amazing. Yeah, we're gonna. Um, speaking of for tomorrow, we're heading out of here around eleven. Are you gonna have enough time to hang out over there? Oh, you said you have a hard stop at twelve. Um, we're heading out at eleven. Okay, I thought we were heading out at ten thirty, getting the spot from eleven to twelve. No, so I it didn't reserve a spot because I was waiting on a head count from everybody, and by the time I got it, they were already closed. Oh, uh, that sucks. So we'll need two. But she said it's not. She, they don't anticipate it being like crazy. She goes, if if you go at that time, it's not gonna be bad. But yeah, father in law and Corey and them are heading out at eleven, so I can get there a little bit early if you want. But I probably won't start the lane time until they're all there because I don't want to dry up half like an hour, half an hour. Okay. Yeah, if you want to just get out there and yeah. chill. Yeah, so I can, like, leave here. I'll probably still leave here, like, around, like, 1045. Yeah, that, that's fine. Do you know how much the ammunition is at that place? Would it be, I'd be better stopping uh, off somewhere? You should go to Walmart. Yeah. Or you should go somewhere else. Like, I should um, probably stop off at Academy on my way there and pick up some That guns. place in general is quite expensive. Have you been to Texas Gun Experience? I, I haven't. have been there. Corey and my father-in-law both have. I've seen videos and pictures. Really nice, but it is, like... A little bit of an upscale. Yeah, it looks um, like. Have you ever been to Shoot Smart over here off 35? Well, I have not been there. I've okay. seen it though. See, yeah. and that place is nice and very inexpensive. Like, you can get a private so, lane, and I think it's 60 bucks. So, we went with four people, and I think the total was like 60 or 70 bucks. But it's as long as you, you have ammo. Like, you are like there. You keep the lane. You keep so, the, the only lane. reason we were going here was to just check out this place because, like, uh, okay. they, neither of them had shot there. And then they also have like a really nice store. And then I think they're contemplating renting a full auto weapon over there. You can rent full autos there. Yeah, I think they have full autos too at the one place here. But Shoot yeah. smart. Yeah. Cool, cool. I'm not going to bring, we have, I have that little rifle too, but I'm not going to bring that. So yeah, I think we'll probably stay on the, um, the pistol side, small arms, or small ranges, arm side. I guess. Yeah. Okay. I've, I got to figure out what they, 
classify my gun as if I'm allowed to shoot it on that. I have to imagine, but it's shoulder mounted, so you never know, right? Technically, yeah. they classify like it I could shoulder. say I'm not going to shoulder it. So, you know what's funny is Where's on Zen? that. Where's Zen? Where we need him? He's a gun guy. He was in here the whole time, too. I know. He left. Um, they technically don't want you to shoulder that weapon. You're not supposed to. Did you see the shoulder strap on it? Yeah. It's got a piece of Velcro. You're supposed to technically Velcro it right here and do a full extension shot. Is oh. how they want you to use it. That's how they don't class because it's not classified as an SMG. Um, it's yeah, it's not classified as an SMG. It's classified as a, Glock. Still a, a handgun. Well, motherfucker, it's a fucking, it's a full on SMG. Go watch some videos of this shit. <laughs> I saw a dude that had a hollow and then a three X magnifier on it, hitting targets from hundred and twenty five yards away with that thing. Go Boom. go pick up a Glock and try and hit something from 30 yards away and so, see how easy that is. I'm getting my bonus at the end of the month, and I was debating about putting some away for um, a computer or a new gun. So I'll debate. Next time the gun show rolls around, we might make a trip out. I, um, I got, man, yeah, we were there this weekend. So the Fort Worth gun show, guys, was going on this weekend. That is the biggest gun show that we have here in Texas, I believe, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. But it happens um, like once a month. I mean, it's all the, yeah, the well. So the Fort Worth Gun Show, yeah, it's like every few months for the Fort Worth Gun Show, but happens more often than not. It's massive. There was like probably 500 plus boots out there. Then personal traders walking around with like signs on them for what they're looking to either trade or sell for. And so this place, like, you walk in, dude. I just wish I was a millionaire. Because you want to buy really, all the toys. You want to buy so much. There is nothing like, maybe this is the Texas in me, but like guns are pretty cool. Like they are a cool, oh, yeah. <laughs> in responsible people's hands. They are a lot of fun, right? Um, and so you go into these places and they have like, you know, specialty cut weapons, things that are like, just, I mean, just out of this world insane. They had, like, some 50 cal freaking sniper rifles well, there. Like, well, I told you, it's like, I want a, I want an AR. Like, I want to get, like, a classic. F4. My dream, my dream gun, though, is a, a Thompson from, like, World War II. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I would die. It doesn't even have to. I just want one. I would put it on display, right? It doesn't even have to be, like, fully functioning. I just want one. Or, like, I went to the one in Louisville uh, when I got my, my Beretta, and they had, um... A completely redone, polished up everything. Um, M1 carbine. <sighs> that looked pretty badass. There's some like really sick ARs that I want. The problem oh. is the reason I bought this one is because the conversion kit was significantly cheaper. I just well, the ARs are like eight hundred bucks. You can get them. So we saw like there's nine millimeter ARs and there's like two two three ARs and then there's like thirty cal ARs basically and. The 9 mil that we saw, we saw some badass 9 mil ARs, which is better in my mind for me because I can afford the ammo to go shooting a lot. 223 right. is about 30 cents around over here right now. So every time you pull the fucking trigger, that's 30 cents gone. Um, so that's pretty pricey. But Colt, for, oh man, the 1911 dude. is so sick. My father in law, I told him. So Does he, he have does one? It. I want to shoot it. I told him. I told him to bring both of his. Um, I told him to bring both of his 1911s with him. So hopefully he does. My father. One of them, <laughs> fucking like the chamber, sometimes get caught gets caught up. It usually happens at least once while we're out there. But oh my god, shooting those guns are so nice. Oh uh, man, I want a 1911 too before I die. My, Again, um, like the, those things are so fucking like thousand dollars. They're almost expensive. For a nice one. I mean, they're a yeah. popular gun for sure. My father-in-law has a shit ton of guns. Like, he just gave us this one. Um, and he's got, like, an AR and stuff that I'm kind of like, so what are you doing with that, right? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Um, but he's, like, so weird. Like, he's very secretive about it. Like, he has not shown. Like, you tip, I'm sure your father-in-law was like, a nooch. Come oh, on yeah, over. He's got a gun rack. The dude's got, like, 50-plus guns yeah. at his house. His is, I don't even know where his is at. It's They're hidden. Like, he is very protective of it. And I'm like, I just want to see what you got. Cause I know he said he's got an AR and so, you know, the closet I have in my office over here. Yeah. So my father-in-law converted his closet into a gun room, same size closet about. Damn. And so you walk in and it's got like on the bottom row, all rifles, 
across both sides of the bottom, so like eight to ten rifles there, um, handful of shotguns, and then like I would say probably like fifteen or so handguns. Of I also need like um, I need a shotgun you. though. Like I feel like if you're owning guns and you don't own a shotgun, it's like I feel like I need a shotgun before I get an AR. You know? So hold on. Like I, f- I just feel like as a gun owner, if you like, I'd feel like a little n- bit of a nut job if I have an AR and not a shotgun. Corey and I, so shotgun is, I would get a shotgun way before I got an AR. Because, because you can go skeet shooting. We can you. actually go shooting yeah. a lot more often. Corey and I have the exact same shotgun, so I'll show you the one that we got. I got this from Academy, Tim. I think I got it for around 300 on sale. Really? Which, to me, is a fucking killer deal. Well, my, you know, my son, so my, my son has a gun. My five-month-old son has a gun. We got it from Academy Super Cheap. Yeah, this is a Turkish-made gun. Do you have it's, it engraved? I love it because it's fucking comes pre-engraved on there. It's got like some gorgeous engraving on it. And this is my favorite. It's an over-under. It's not a side-by-side. So your shots are basically you can hold the same line on your shot when we go so we go sports oh shooting oh so no, a normal decent. than a normal shotgun which is like this yours is like that is that what you're saying like the barrel itself is not yeah so i'm gonna so yeah yeah yeah, yeah 50 cal it's... desert eagle the um i'm sure the gun place here i held the 50 cal the the desert eagle at the last time i went shooting that thing is a beast light though not as heavy as i thought it would be for skeet shooting, I bought. People think I'm a pussy for this, but you bought a fucking oh. ten gauge, you bitch. Dude, if I bought ten gauge, I'd break my fucking shoulder. I bought a twenty gauge. A twenty gauge, not ten gauge. Twelve gauge. Yeah, I was so shooting my with the ten gauge. Father, like most of my friends have twelve. Twelve gauge is like the twelve gauge is the standard. Yeah, twenty I bought because when we go skeet shooting, we usually do about hundred and fifty rounds or so. Dude, by the time I'm fucking done, my shoulder's done. So. I would have got a 20 after I would used a 12 for a long time. And it's just, by the way, I'm done. And I feel so comfortable when I'm out of there. I'm <laughs> like, okay. I feel everybody else is like <sighs> bruising. And you're like, and you I, know what? I still hit them just the I same. I got a additional like bus stock padding. <laughs> Dude, this thing is so comfortable on the kickback. You went so don't bougie even... on your shotgun. Oh, yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it, though. You're but not bringing that tomorrow, are you? Shotgun, no. Um, Cause that's if you just... get a shotgun, I would either go get the 12 or the 20 yeah, of yeah. this exact one. And we both use it for speed shooting. Does Corey have and 12 I... or 20? He has the 12. But... Yeah, I might have to go 12 just because I, I would yeah, judge myself. <laughs> no, I, I had no except I had no problem in doing it because now we go skeet shooting and on the 10th frame... I feel pretty comfortable going into those final shots. For some people, like, okay, I just don't, just don't hurt on this last couple shots. <laughs> I hit, what, 71 out of 100 last time we went? Damn. Where Russian do you go shot. to skeet shoot? Elm Fork. Elm Fork? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That'd be fun, I think, to go do. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. I haven't Very been fun. a part. I've never gone just, like, by myself. I, I went on, like, a trip one time. But um, more than welcome to come with us when we go. I've been with my father and all. We went once earlier this year when some of his friends were in town. Right. He took us out. Well, let me yeah. pick up. So you know what? Maybe that's what I'll do because shotguns are relatively inexpensive. You know. Why do you have a hard stop at twelve? Morgan's not off. Oh. And I oh. think she has a call at like one o'clock. So I have to be home to take care of Shep. That makes sense. Yeah, so she does not have tomorrow off of work, which sucks. But yeah, that does suck. Yeah, but um, but yeah. So I think that's what. Uh, I think that's probably what I'll get then. Rather than an AR, I'll get a shotgun, so that way I can actually go and. What well, am I gonna do? Five, with an AR. About five hundred dollars cheaper. Yeah, and. You'll be able to use it a lot more. The AR is it's it's that's gonna be a fun gun to have. I want one too. Don't get me wrong. I just can't get myself to get it because I'm like, man, I'm barely gonna use this motherfucker, and it's gonna cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah. So when I get some of the badass attachments for my new conversion kit, 
I'll eventually get an AR because the scope I'm going to get will be the price of my fucking gun in there probably almost. And that I can use on like both guns. So I won't have to worry about like different You're attachments right. and, but yeah, it's, it's expensive. Yeah. I yeah. always go into a gun kick every few months. I need to let this pass without buying anything else right now. <laughs> Well, like I said, yeah. So if I get that bonus, I've I've wanted a shotgun just so I can go skeet shooting. So maybe I'll do that. Yeah, it's or called sk- the Yieldies is the name of it. Yieldies. And it, yep, it's a it's at Academy, and I know me, another Tim that I know has it, Steve, and then Corey. We all bought it around the same time, and we fucking love them. All right, I'll have to check it out. All right, well, I'm going to end the stream so that way I can get to editing this video and I'll have to splice the interview in there and get on YouTube for tonight. And then that way we, we should have... uh, start doing the show with guns in our hand. Mix it up. Just, just... welcome to the Santa Ring. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in Texas. Probably <laughs> 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 get some more viewers. Probably. All right. I'm going to end the stream. Um, Ginger, thank you for sticking around. Anyone else who's in chat, thank you very much. Thank all of y'all. I will be on here probably in like 15 minutes or so. I'm going to go see what the wifey's doing. Okay. I'll hop back in. Later, boys. All right.